please put your hands together. Welcome to the stage, Leon Vancom. What's up, guys? It's great to be here. Today I'll be presenting on Bitcoin and real estate and how Bitcoin is revolutioning the largest asset class in the world. So a few words to me, who am I? I learned about Bitcoin while studying philosophy and financial economics at university. And shortly after, I started working in the real estate industry with a focus on project financing, project development, and asset management. And ever since, I've been studying both assets very closely. And working in the real estate industry has allowed me to understand how broken our monetary system is, but also the potential of Bitcoin as a superior store of value to real estate. So today, real estate is the number one store of value in the world. As you can see, it's about 300 times larger than Bitcoin that has already turned into a trillion dollar asset. And depending on your view on fiat money and debt, between one to two thirds of the world's wealth is stored in real estate. And I personally, at some point in my career, started to ask myself, how come that in a highly digitalized world, we still use physical objects to store value? And I thought that's pretty strange. So this development coincides with the 15th of August, 1971, when the US President Richard Nixon announced that the US would stop the convertibility of dollar into gold at a fixed rate. And this has created the fiat era, an era with no monetary <clears throat> standards and an exponential increase in the money supply. And this has really created the role of real estate as the number one inflation hedge and the number one of store value in the world. This becomes very obvious when you look at the rates of the monetary increase and housing prices. So here we have M2 money supply, which broadly reflects the funds available for spending, saving, and investment. And you can see an exponential increase since 1971. There's a compound annual growth rate of the M2 money supply of around 6.8%. And if we look at housing prices, we can see a very similar dynamic. So housing prices increased at the compound annual growth rate of around 5.7%, closely following the expansion of the monetary supply. And the same is true for commercial real estate. Even though commercial real estate has not grown as aggressively in value as residential, it has also grown at a compound annual growth rate of 4.4%, loosely following the exponential increase in the money supply since 1971. And now, if we layer all three graphs on top of each other, it becomes very clear there's a trend here. Real estate rises alongside the monetary supply. So what happens is as new monetary units enter the market, existing monetary units lose purchasing power, and people are forced to invest in order to protect their wealth. And real estate, due to scarcity and attractive financing options, has turned into the number one investment. Commercial banks, acting on central bank policies, create new fiat currency, which they funnel into the market through credit and mortgages and property investments, and thus inflate the nominal value of real estate. So real estate really acts as a kind of a reservoir for new money entering the fiat economy. It also acts for a reservoir for capital that is flying or is looking for safe light of the inflationary fiat system into a scarce asset. So the rise in nominal value of real estate actually largely reflects the debasement of fiat currency. And if we look into the history of humankind, throughout thousands of years, real estate was actually priced based on its utility value, which is characterized by the fact that you can live in it, you can use it for production, and you can rent it out to generate cash flow, and less has agricultural capacity, of course. This is true for the Zhou dynasty in China, for the Roman Empire, the Byzantine Empire, the Shogunate system in Japan, feudal Europe, colonial Latin America, and the Mughal Empire in India. So throughout time, real estate was always tied to wealth and prosperity, but the wealth of real estate owners was more quantified in the agricultural capacity of land rather than its use as money. So the use as money and the use as the predominant store value of a civilization is a fairly new phenomenon. There are some examples in the past, 
And one noteworthy example was in the second to third century AD, the Romans started to inflate the gold currency aureus, and land started to appreciate in price as a result of this. And this was also the time when the Roman Empire started to collapse. So this should tell us something about the state of the currency system we're living in today. So most real estate investors, when I discuss Bitcoin with them, they falsely believe that real estate is a good investment because it carries intrinsic value based on its utility or cash flow. But this concept is fundamentally flawed. Intrinsic value does not exist. Value is subjective, and this is something that Karl Menger, a pioneer of the Austrian School of Economics, and arguably an inspiration behind the Cypherbank's creation of Bitcoin, already proved in the 19th century. He showed that value is purely subjective. If we take the Rolex watch as an example, its price is not merely a reflection of the material or the craftsmanship that went into its production, but the price is as much as somebody is willing to pay for it. And this is true for all types of assets, including Bitcoin and real estate. And in fact, real estate has only become so valuable because it has been priced away from its utility value, because it is used as a speculative investment vehicle to hedge against inflation. But if we look at the characteristics of real estate and Bitcoin, it becomes very obvious that Bitcoin is the superior store of value. First of all, and this is very important, is the first absolute scarce asset in the universe. Absolute scarcity is not relevant if there's no demand, right? I can create an art piece, and if nobody wants to buy it, it's absolutely scarce, but there's no demand. But with Bitcoin, there is demand because of its excellent monetary properties. And it's also cheaper to maintain, it's relatively cheap to store, and it's highly liquid, liquid, mobile, indivisible, which is very important in the world of increasing conflict. So real estate in Germany translates to immobilia, which literally means to be immobile. Real estate creates a local dependency, which can create a threat. So what we can see here, I marked, the only difference is cash flow. But the cash flow of real estate does not prove that it's a good store of value. It just shows its property as a reservoir for new money that enters the fiat economy. And commercial banks like, and central banks also, favor this type of policy. They like to give out loans for mortgages because they create this money, then charge interest on it. So this is a large part of their revenue stream. But when we look at the price of housing in, real in Bitcoin, we understand that the value of real estate is collapsing against Bitcoin, while the price of an average home in the US was about 1,000 Bitcoin eight years ago in 2016. Today, it's around 10 Bitcoin, right? So we need to change our unit of account. There's a new unit of account, and it's Bitcoin, and it's repricing the world. Because Bitcoin is a near-perfect digital store of value, threatens real estate in its capacity to store value, I believe it heralds a digital disruption that we can liken to the disruption that e-commerce meant for retail, right? Real estate capitalized on scarcity in the physical realm, and Bitcoin introduced scarcity to the digital realm. And we can liken this also to the change that email brought to the postal service. A digital network can increase through the network effects at an exponential rate that an asset like real estate cannot keep up with. So I believe that real estate investors are really faced with a historical transformation. The role of the number one store of value that real estate held over the past 50 years is threatened. I believe as an actual store of value, Bitcoin will drain the monetary premium that sits in real estate. It will flow on Bitcoin over time, and real estate will collapse to its utility value. Then we have rates of inflation that in the past, the real estate sector benefited from inflation for two reasons. Number one, inflation decreases debt that is incurred to buy and build real estate. And it also forced people to invest in real estate, which drove up its nominal value. But at this point in time, inflation has reached a point where the construction of real estate has become unprofitable because we live in a higher interest rate environment. Higher interest rates mean that the cost of borrowing goes up and because real estate is constructed with debt and real estate is bought with debt, this creates a scenario where it becomes more expensive to build real estate, but there's less demand for real estate. While at the same time, governments are forcing property owners to maintain their property. So this is going to, in my opinion, 
This is going to cause maintenance costs to skyrocket going forward. And something that I believe is very important, there's a social change. So millennials, Generation G, and Generation Alpha, I believe they naturally will gravitate towards Bitcoin as their preferred store of value. Firstly, because they've been priced out, out of real estate, but also me as a millennial, I'll trust a digital network much more than an asset that is part of a system that can be corrupted and tampered with. In Generation Alpha, those are people that are born in 2010, so they will come into a reality where they don't know any other reality than with Bitcoin. Generally speaking, by the way, the disruption that Bitcoin brings to the real estate sector is very beneficial for society because it's going to make the cost of living go down. It's going to make housing affordable. But as a real estate developer, the question is, how can we survive, right? Don't get me wrong, the use of real estate as a speculative investment vehicle to hedge against inflation is generally bad for society. But the provision of housing by the private sector is very important. Everybody who's lived in Soviet uh, countries or everyone who pays attention to the peripheral regions around Prague, I don't think you want to live in a building that is provided by the state. You want to live in a beautiful building that is provided by the private sector. So the situation right now for a real estate developer is as follows. Here, I'm showing an overly simplified balance sheet of a real estate developer. And on the liability side, not only, but predominantly, you have debt. And as interest rates go up, the liability side for real estate developers is growing massively. While at the same time, the asset side is shrinking because less people can afford to buy real estate, right? So we have a situation where the liability side is growing while the asset side is shrinking. And in my opinion, the obvious strategy is, as a real estate developer, you need to add Bitcoin to your balance sheet, right? You can benefit massively from doing that. Number one, you hedge against a scenario where the monetary premium that sits in real estate flows into Bitcoin, but at the same time, in a higher interest rate environment like we are in right now, Bitcoin as an asset that somewhat exists independent of the central bank ecosystem can thrive in even in a higher interest rate environment because the price of Bitcoin is predominantly dependent on supply and demand. And many people were wondering if Bitcoin is going to continue right, on an upward spiral, even a higher interest rate environment. But Bitcoin has proven that it will because it's dependent on its own supply and demand dynamics. And generally speaking, yes, Bitcoin heralds digital disruption to the real estate sector, but I also believe it's a large business opportunity comes, us, comes up for us real estate investors with Bitcoin. And rather than feeling threatened by Bitcoin, I actually see it as an opportunity to build a business model that's more resilient because real estate at this point in time has already completed its adoption cycle as a store of value where Bitcoin really is only at the beginning. So the monetary premium that sits in real estate, that is really the opportunity to leverage that monetary premium into Bitcoin in order to secure the profits you've made in real estate and then be able to provide housing to the market if we move on to a Bitcoin standard. So in the following, I want to share some strategies with you that I developed and tried to practically implicate in our company. And the most obvious thing to do is you use the rental income, the cash flow, to buy Bitcoin, to protect the cash flow from inflation, but also to build Bitcoin holdings and to be able to maintain your property going forward. But because I believe that the demonetization of real estate is happening actually right now, it's not enough to only secure the cash flow. It's actually important to diversify into Bitcoin. So you can either take profits that you made from selling real estate, or you can actively look at your portfolio and decide what property can I sell off? Usually, real estate is built with debt. So it should most likely be a property where you've already paid back a large amount of, of debt, right? But then we have to go a step further. We actually have to attack the liquid capital that sits in real estate and that will over time become demonetized and leverage it into Bitcoin. And real estate developers can naturally copy the strategy that Michael Saylor has performed with MicroStrategy because as an income producing asset, real estate naturally lends itself to be lent against to acquire Bitcoin and pay back the debt with the rental income. And um, I believe that 
the introduction of Bitcoin in any type of business structure, right, also for a real estate developer, introduces a new novel form of capital that by design is disinflationary and because it has excellent monetary properties and a corresponding demand, it acts deflationary, meaning it's increasing its purchasing power. So through the accumulation of Bitcoin, you can increase the credit worthiness of your company, right? Bitcoin is pristine collateral for lending, and it's going to become increasingly important as a real estate guy to be able to lend against the capital base of balance sheet in order to maintain and construct properties going forward. There is some interest rate sens sensitivity here that you need to pay attention to, but I obviously think that is something that a real estate developer should be aware of. And lastly, I believe that Bitcoin, generally speaking, will become an integral part of credit markets, especially once banks understand if they give out a credit and they force the borrower to buy Bitcoin as well, they actually hedge themselves against the default of the credit line. Because if the business, for example, fails, there will still be the Bitcoin that over time will have most likely deflated in value. So it's actually a hedge for the bank who gives out the credit. And if I would be a bank, and if I would finance a real estate developer, and the real estate developer asks me for a loan of $10 million, I would say, take $11 million, take 9% of the loan, 1 million, buy Bitcoin, take 91% of the loan, construct your real estate project. Once the real estate project has been finished, let's say after five years, Bitcoin will most likely already gone to a halving cycle, which historically speaking increases its price, right? And this means that you have a capital base in the same entity that owns the real estate project that you can lend against to maintain the property, construct new properties, or refinance quicker to buy new Bitcoin, and you also hedge against the scenario where the monetary premium that sits in real estate flows into Bitcoin over time. I'm currently writing a... Oh, thank you. Thank you, guys. That means a lot. Um, yes, I'm, I'm currently writing a book uh, by the working title Digital Real Estate. If you want to stay up to date with my writing process, you can follow me, leonvankum.substack.com. There's a monthly newsletter where I share my writings. And you can follow me on Nostra if you like, at Leon Vankum. And I want to thank you, really, from the bottom of my heart for giving me your time today. The last years, both for Bitcoin and personally, weren't very easy, but it makes me very proud to be here today and to see what Bitcoin has become. Thank you.